So let's dive into one final album that you worked on in 2022 or that came out in 2022. So the Standstills album Shockwave. And man, I uh, I got a quote here from Johnny and Renee from the Standstills. So we're giving you a practice on receiving these, these oh, kind Johnny. words. <laughs> so Johnny and Renee, the Standstills, they say, Jill is next to none when it comes to her drive and ambition to make great albums. She strives to put her best into her products, and that could be the understatement of the year. We loved working with Jill and consider her a ninja in her craft, but most importantly, a friend who cares about the power of music and she respects the arts. At heart, we believe she is not just another person who understands the science. She is an artist. That's Johnny and Renee of The Standstill. Aw, that's so nice of them. <laughs> There you go. So it was great working with them too. Like they're just so talented. Yeah. And working with them, did they go into that studio? Did you go somewhere else? Was it done remotely? How did this album come together? So we did it in two chunks. Um, and I remember that because I always do uh, for albums, I usually do like a, an album chart. And the first one was before Christmas. So they had a bunch of Christmas pictures and the second one was around Easter. So it was a bunch of Easter pictures, um, but it wasn't two chunks. So it was six songs then, and I think another six then. And um, they came to the studio and stayed there with Neil. I think Chuck came out for the days he was recording bass, but not for the rest of the time. And it was just, it was a very close knit process. Like, you know, it didn't just end at 10 hours. Like sometimes we just went upstairs and, you know, hung out with them after or, you know, just hang out. It's 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 very different when people stay for a longer time. And it's, it's also different because they're very nice people and it's so easy to get along with them. So, yeah, it was just a great time. And, and we, we should mention that there are two people involved with this album that were involved in the Three Days Grace Explosions album, right? So we had uh, Neil Sanderson, instead of being the drummer, he was here on the producer side. And there was also Howard Benson, who produced the Three Days Grace album. So Howard Benson, for those that don't know, uh, this guy's won two Grammys. He's been nominated for 16 Grammys, and he's worked with everybody. I, I have a list of like... 30 big bands that he worked with. I'm not going to read them, but uh, Google, Google Howard Benson. Um, how different was it to work with Neil in this capacity as a producer versus Neil as a drummer? Very different because I mean, Neil as a drummer is also still Neil a producer. He produces a lot on the side. So he still, you know, gets a lot of creative say about the songs. It's not just like he's just a drummer and that's it. Even for Three Days Grace, he's involved a lot in the synths and how the song should sound and how to arrange things. Like he is a producer at heart, definitely. So I feel like it was different seeing Renee drum and him just kind of producing her drumming. I mean, he didn't have to do much because she's an amazing drummer, but like tell her the autumn, time, oh, you know what? Like maybe in this spot, change to this symbol and then do this kind of, you know, beat. And he could show her better because he's also a drummer. So he could literally just go behind and just show her, which is way easier than just trying to talk about it once again. But he is, he's a very, he's a very creative spirit. Like he has so many ideas and he's very open to things flowing. So it's not like he comes into the studio and he's like, that's what we're going to record and that's how we're going to do it. Like, not at all. Like, he's open to changes and, you know what, let's do that. And if it doesn't work out, he's like, that's fine, we tried it out. Let's go the other way again. Like, he's very quick in that way. Um, he He's very just natural, I feel like. Like, it's definitely something I know why he still do, does it like he has a production company with Howard Benson called Judge and Jury and they produce a lot together and you can tell that he is a very natural producer like that's just something that comes easy to him because he is very he's also a piano player very good one I feel like and he just on the side can just easily produce you a little you know synth beat on the backside or something so it's easy for him to talk about music and just you know get things going so I have 
one final quote before we wrap up. And this yeah. is the, the longest quote uh, of the interview. This is from my boy, Chuck. So Chuck Daly, who played bass oh, nice. on this Standstills album. So former bass player for I Mother Earth and the Salads. And this is what Chuck has to say. So this is a long one. So here we go. Jill, yeah. Jill is so unbelievably amazing. I had the extreme fortune of tracking the Standstills album for a few days with Jill, and I've been dreaming about the opportunity to work with her again ever since. The entire session, she sat right beside me, giving me the support I needed, making my ideas come to life, and creating a general vibe that simply made me want to play as hard and good as I possibly could. And sometimes, when I screw up, but I like the idea, Jill would, as sung in one of my favorite Ben Folds song, Ben Folds songs, she would fix all my shitty tracks. Uh, Jill is an audio genius, a superpower of tone with editing skills that make us musicians feel like we've practiced an additional 10 years leading up to the session. I've been making records for over 30 years now, and I've never run, run into someone quite like Jill. She may be the best on the planet, but also incredibly humble. So we'll congratulate everyone else on a job well done. Not to mention, if she comes to see you play live, she's going to dance like nobody is watching. It's very true. Uh, I saw the video. So uh, which in turn, it does it again. It makes you want to play your ass off in response. Everyone needs to know about Jill. Her work has brought millions upon millions of people joy. We are so lucky to have her making all the best in Canadian music sound the way it's meant to be heard. A final word of warning, though, if you're going into a session with her, be cautious around her microphones. Don't touch. LOL. So that's from Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, he's just such a pleasant person to work with. Just very positive. He knows his tones, which makes my work always easier. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a monster bass player. Uh, he is. He plays very melodically. Like you can sometimes when guitar players turn into bass players they you can tell that they're not really bass players but chuck is like he understands the bass he knows i am sometimes even more important than other instruments because i'm rhythmic and melodic you know it's just uh bass is very important it's like the foundation if there's no you know good bass in certain songs i mean sometimes depending on the song genre I get it. It's different. But when you have a good bass line, it just makes you dance without knowing why. You know, 